Hello, my name is MJ McDermott. I'm a meteorologist with a degree in atmospheric sciences from the University of Washington, and I do the weather on the morning news show on Channel 13 in Seattle. If you want to know how I got involved in helping improve math standards in Washington State, stay tuned. But first, let's get right to it. I have a question for you. Do you think that students in Washington State should learn multiplication and division with mastery by the end of the fifth grade? If so, you must insist that schools and school districts not use these curricula, reform math curricula called Investigations in Numbers, Data and Space, often called TURK, or Everyday Mathematics. Now let's do some math. Oh wait, one definition first. An algorithm is a systematic method of solving a certain kind of problem. Now here is the standard algorithm for double digit multiplication. Let's do the problem 26 times 31 equals, I don't know. So let's write it like this. The standard algorithm goes like this. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 2, although it's not a 2, it's a 20, is 2 or 20. 3 times 6 is 18, 8. And then we carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And we do the addition. Sometimes we put a 0 here. 6, 8, and 2 is 10. Carry the 1 or the 100. And the answer, 806. A lot of parents learn this and know this as double digit multiplication. The standard algorithm is efficient, works every time, and most parents know how to do it. In Turk investigations, no algorithms are taught. Instead, students are encouraged to reason through problems with something called cluster problems. Let me show you an example right out of the teacher's manual. All right, same problem, 26 times 31. So the student reasons, well, I know that 26 times 31 equals uh, 20 times 31 plus 5 times 31 plus 1 times 31 because 20 plus 5 plus 1 equals 26. There it is. So how do I find 20 plus 31 times 31? Well, I know 10 times 31 is 310. And I can figure out from mental math that 20 times 31 is twice this. And I can figure out that that's 620. Now I need to know the 5 here. 5 times 31 is going to be half of this. So I can figure out from mental math that that's 155. So I add that to the 620 and I get 775 so far. So now all I need is one more. And I know 1 times 31 equals 31. And then I just add the 775 here. And I get 806, my answer. Students who learn math via Turk investigations rarely become efficient, confident, and fluent math users. Now, everyday mathematics does teach algorithms, just not the most efficient and least error-prone, the standard algorithm. Instead, it uses a focus algorithm, the partial products method. Same problem, 26 times 31. We set it up like the traditional algorithm, but instead we're going to multiply each piece by each piece. I'll show you. 1 times 6 is 6. Here it is over there. 1 times 2, but it's not a 2, it's a 20. The idea being that this teaches place value better than the standard algorithm. 3 times 6, but it's not a 3, it's a 30, is 180. And 3 times 2, no, but it's 30 times 20, equals 600. Okay? And then we add up all the bits. 6, 10, there's the answer, 806. Partial products works every time, but personally I get confused about which bit adds to which bit, and then I get, I've made mistakes in here on the addition part, but everyday math says when problems get cumbersome, we can just reach for a calculator. Another popular algorithm taught in everyday math is the lattice method. Same problem, 26 times 31. This time we have to set up 
a lattice works like this. We put the 26 on top and the 31 along the side like that. And then we draw these diagonals. And then we do 1 times 6 and fill it in like that, 0, 6. 3 times 6, 18. 1 times 2, no effort to say 1 times 20, by the way, 0, 2. And 3 times 2, 0, 6. Now we add it up along the diagonal. 6, 8, 0 plus 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 6, 7, 8, time, and 0 is 8 and a zero there. And the answer is read this way. There's your answer, 806. It's kind of fun. It works every time. But even the authors of Everyday Math admit in their teacher's manual, why the lattice method works is not immediately obvious, but it is very efficient and powerful. The principal disadvantages of the algorithm are that it is unfamiliar to many adults, i.e. parents, and making the lattice takes time. Well. One main argument against the standard algorithm is that it does not teach place value. And I defy you to show me how the lattice method teaches place value and you still carry, like we did inside the little boxes. Now these algorithms, the lattice method, the partial products method, are wonderful teaching tools. But then why not go on and teach the most efficient and internationally known algorithm? Also, there's insufficient time and practice in everyday math. Students do not master an algorithm. Students do not emerge masters with well-honed skills in their toolkit as they move on to middle school. More on this in a minute. Finally, decimal and fraction multiplication work in everyday math is shallow in content, but that's a topic for another time.